It's a curious thing. Curiosity is the engine of progress. Big questions are rooted in curiosity. I wonder if a human could walk on the moon. While other questions are relatively small, I wonder if we could prevent socks from clinging together in the dryer. But questions of all sizes are the beginning of solutions. That's one reason why engineering faculty have embraced the question formulation technique called QFT. You'll see more about this in the collected resources for this section. Questioning is one behavior with roots in curiosity, but curiosity is a fundamental motivator with many expressed behaviors. When developed as a mental habit, it can even be a disposition or an inclination. Curiosity experts have categorized it into a variety of types. And when it comes to entrepreneurial mindset, some types of curiosity are extremely important, especially those associated with opportunity. Let me share an example. Suppose you're involved in making a product or offering a service. Here are three questions that might be related to how you offer your product or service in the future. Some products, please, just to get us thinking. Wonderful, those are great images, but if you're an educator, this scenario is for you too. Jot down these questions and some short answers. We'll use them later on a related Engineering Unleashed forum. Okay, you ready? Think about what you offer in your work. What if your customers can customize every single detail of your product? Technologies are offering personalization like never before. Even with consumer goods, the combination of direct shipment and manufacturing capability that's capable of creating small batches allows personalization of consumer goods at competitive prices. That's a reality now. What would that imply in your work? Take a moment and make some notes for later. Are you ready for the second question? The sharing economy is growing. What if your customers could share your products and services? Imagine scenarios that lets customers not own an asset, but access it only if needed, helping them split the cost among peers. Some examples you probably already know. Car sharing, bike sharing, scooter sharing, ride sharing, office sharing, but the list is going to continue to grow. How would that change your work? What if every customer had access to a 3D printer? While 3D printer ownership is increasingly possible, the previous question about ownership sharing has already led to businesses similar to Airbnb for 3D printers. You upload your design to a registered local owner, select a material, confirm its printability, and then you pick it up later. How will that change your work in the future? But you know, what all these questions have in common is the focus on what if. That's just one type of curiosity. Let's look further at the dimensions of curiosity. First of all, curiosity is an information gap, a gap in something that we might need to know or something that we might want to know. You could say that those are both an intrinsic and extrinsic motivators for needing to know a piece of information. For example, in the need to know category, this guy might say, I wonder how far I can jump. Or in the want to know category, it might be, what's the longest bridge in the world? We'll Google it. The second thing to know about curiosity is that there are various types. There's various dimensions of curiosity, including Diversive curiosity and epistemic curiosity. Those are two dimensions of curiosity. In diversive curiosity, we ask the question, what if? A lot of the questions that we just talked about. Epistemic curiosity is the deep desire to know why, the underlying fundamental reasons. It's like the trunk of a tree, while diversive curiosity forms the branches. Those two dimensions can help educators figure out the correct type of assignments when they want to develop that curiosity in students. Another dimension of curiosity includes situational and dispositional types of curiosity. Situational curiosity comes about because of circumstances. Dispositional curiosity is an inclination. It's a mental habit. It's one that becomes developed over time. In fact, theory says that if we repeatedly are exposed to situations that stimulate our curiosity, we will become dispositionally curious. And that's a great habit for the entrepreneurial-minded individual. 
The last thing to know about Curiosity is that there is a sweet spot. As an educator, that's exactly where you want to hit. Too little Curiosity in the classroom can yield boredom. Too much Curiosity in the classroom can actually yield a zone of anxiety. So the sweet spot of Curiosity is just enough information to create the information gap that's the right size. Ian Leslie, the author of the book Curious, makes a terrific point about the amount of information that's necessary just to be curious. We need to have lots of experiences. He says, the crucial point here is that it's not simply the absence of information that creates curiosity, but a gap in our existing information. People tend not to be curious about things of which they're completely ignorant. When we know nothing about a subject, we find it hard to engage our brains because we can't imagine finding it interesting or because we're intimidated by the prospect of starting to learn about something that might, just by scale or complexity, defeat us. Conversely, when we know a lot about a subject and we feel we have pretty much got it covered, we're unlikely to be interested in more information about it. In between those two states is what experts call the zone of proximal learning. For the sake of simplicity, let's call it the curiosity zone. <laughs>